where are the patch notes? Easiest place for quality content. Your place, reddit.com. All right, here we go. Uh, I'll probably just maximize this and turn off the in queue thing. There we go. Let's do this. Is this the one before patch? Uh, before, well, I think they said Worlds was on 6.18. So, okay, 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 okay. I think there's one more small patch, but this is either, this is one of the last two. All right, welcome back, guys. We're at patch 6.17 patch notes. Uh, so, like I said before, I think that they announced that Worlds would be on 6.18. So this is either the second to last or last patch before Worlds. Regardless, um, there's a lot of drama right now about uh, patch changing before Worlds. And I brought up last year's Worlds that had the Juggernaut patch. I don't want that shit to ever happen again. There is a situation where... Uh, I think before Worlds, I want the teams to show me the best possible, highest level of play possible at Worlds. And so that's why I want there to be marginal changes so pros don't need to spend so long adapting and can literally just show me the stuff that they've been working on for months when I walk into Worlds. So I don't want to see too big of changes. However, I do, I would like to see right now, I, like I said before, the support pool is really, really good. I think AD pool is fairly good. Maybe Silver Ash Jin, maybe a little bit too strong. But um, you, there's still like, I think competitively there's about 7 ADs that get played. I think the jungle pool is ridiculous. Gragas Rexai get played every game with I think uh, occasionally Nidalee gets tossed in there with Elise. And I think that probably Gragas and Rexai need to get nerfed. Uh, I think I saw a post saying that Rexai got nerfed 7 times in a row. Well, we're, let's go for 8 because I still think the champion is still really, really good. Uh, top lane meta, Nara is super strong right now. Uh, and so is Game Plank. I'd like to see uh, uh, just an. I like to see like maybe a little bit of a touch up on both of those. And the mid lane meta is fairly wide open outside of Vladimir. I would still like to see Vladimir nerfed because I think the champion is still too good. Uh, but generally, I think most of all the roles are really really good, especially mid and support right now. I think are fairly good. And then what the really role I hate the most is. I think jungle. So anyways, that's the stuff I want to see before I look through the patch notes. And hopefully the stuff I see before Worlds. Let's walk into it. Uh, Annie change. One of our goals for Annie mid-season update, I don't think she needs a change. I think she's relatively strong as she is. Uh, she's not going to see much play because her effective range isn't that long. Uh, and she's really, really reliant on her old initiation. And But I think that she's still good. Like She's decent. Uh, bonus attacks and move speed after any death decays twenty percent faster. Okay, it felt like whatever. That doesn't matter. Like straight up, that's that that's irrelevant for Annie's relative strength, in my opinion. Uh, Ash. So like I said, Ash is one of the power picks right now. Jin, Ash, Sivir are get picked probably 90, 80 percent of the games. Uh, I do think that each three of those champions can get nerfed a little bit and still remain relatively good and picked a lot competitively. So what do they do here? Um, our damage down. Uh, quite frankly, I don't think that matters at all. I think that that's completely useless. I like uh, maybe in our old, uh, cooldown nerf would be a lot more effective than our damage because if I hit them with the ulti, I'm just sending them up for my team to get the pick. Uh, maybe in, in pure two v two situations bot lane, uh, yes, the ulti damage does come into effect. However, I think if they wanted to nerf this ability, I think the cooldown would be a much better target to look at uh, than anything else. And Q duration down. Okay, I think that's a pretty big nerf. Uh, they nerfed it by 20%, which is pretty good. That's uh, still a minor nerf, and it's something I'd li which I'd like to see because, yeah, I think Ash is good right now and could use maybe a little bit of tuning. So I think these nerfs are pretty good. Corky. So Corky is not very good right now. I Even though they buffed Trinity Force and like a bunch of other random stuff, buffed his E a couple patches ago, he's still not seeing play. I think one of the things that can make him see play is I think they nerfed his passive, so rebuffing his passive would be pretty good. Uh, but let's see what they decide to do. His package got buffed last patch, I think, on the cooldown basis. I think they, they took off a minute on it. So Attacking Wars no longer removes the package out of combat movement speed. Okay, super minor buff. He's still not seeing that much play. Maybe it might take a while for people to pick him up because Corky tends to see relatively high amounts of play closing in on worlds. I think Corky's about one small buff away from being very good. Uh, and so it's very dangerous to buff him too much, but I do think that he maybe could use a little bit of love. Oh, uh, and I'm being told Wayless went off on Corky in the LPL before playoffs. So I, I, I don't think 
Corky is bad. I think, like I said, he might be a, one buff away from being like really god mode. Uh, okay, so Diana, her Moonfall got buffed. Um, honestly, it's really nice. So it got buffed by seventy five. So it cre essentially increased by thirty three percent. I like it a lot, mainly because Diana's kit is really stacked. Like, um, when you look at that, uh, the rest of the people's kits, they a lot of times the passive isn't very useful. It just adds on to stuff. So a good example is Lissandra passive, right? So Lissandra's kit is so stuffed with abilities and spells that they couldn't really find a way to add a good passive onto her kit. So they just gave her some random mana passive that and nerfed her mana regen so that you kind of have to play around it, but it's not very cool and it doesn't really do anything with the kit. Uh, Diana's passive, however, is the opposite of that. Diana's passive is one of the best in the game. And uh, way back when they 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 nerfed Lich Bane, they gave her passive a buff to compensate at a time where no one was really buying Lich Bane and every Diana player prefers Nashers due to how attack speed scales on her. So she got a free AP ratio buff a long time ago. I think at the moment it's a 240 base damage ability that does has 0.6 or 0.8 AP scaling. So it's one of the highest damage passives in her kit. Uh, so rather than having a really bad passive, her E tends to be relatively bad. It's like a really, really long cooldown, 20, 30 seconds, and the pull-in was nothing. The pull-in used to be a lot, I think the range used to be a lot bigger. So I think having the people pull in deeper, I guess, is a good buff, because relatively I feel like E isn't a very fun ability to use. It's okay, it's not bad, it fits your Lunar Kit quite well, but it just doesn't seem to do that much. And I think that maybe this might help a lot. I think she's still not going to see much play competitively, but uh, she's still strong. It's like she's a strong champion. It's just that really playing this champion is tough because the junglers can just camp the shit out of you and you die. So, but I don't think it means that she's a bad champion. Uh, so, Draven. Draven buffs are Draven's one of the ADs that isn't seeing much play right now. Uh, if you want to talk to me about balance philosophy, I'd much prefer to push underplay champions upwards uh maybe not make them super op in one swing but i like to make them super make them bring up to like a, a standard of like good uh and then work on toning down other stuff so i think the most important things when it comes to balancing champions are pu pushing up champions for more that to make champions more viable in specific situations they don't have to be super awesome or anything and pushing down really oppressive champions that tend to just flatten the meta a good example is when pre-nerf renekton back in season three where you'd literally only play renekton shivana mundo that was actually the worst time for top lane possible and if you ever had to play against renekton elise uh you that's like stuff you'd have nightmares about because you would just get dove 100 to zero and die with zero counterplay off the renekton stun uh, and it was not a fun time. And so outside of those two situations, that's kind of where I'd like to see balance done. Draven's a champion that's not very good right now. He's an immobility, and he's like a snowball champion. And so if he has a snowball out of lane, he's not very good in team fights. You just slam him in team fights, and he's dead instantly because he doesn't snowball that much. So I think any kind of buffs is, are nice to him. Uh, 20 mana is not bad. And what is this? They nerfed the cooldown? early huh that's awkward <laughs> uh, I, I don't think this will relatively do much I thought it was going to be more in terms of maybe more mana saving but uh, usually all ultis are flatlined around the 100 mana area I think that's what Riot's done just oh, across the board almost all ultis are 100 mana so I thought that it just said that the R cooldown was reduced I just read this and I assumed that it was reduced at all, all ranks but it early actually got a 10 second nerf, which kind of sucks. Uh, it's not going to do too much. I think 10 sec, like 20 seconds is like a really big deal. 10 seconds to 5 to 10 seconds is kind of a small deal when it comes to big 2 minute ultis like this. Maybe this tries to buff his like more late game oriented stuff, but Draven already isn't very good late game. I think the mana buff is a little bit of help, but this doesn't really change his relative strength at all. Uh, Evelyn, our cooldown decreased. Okay, so Evelyn is... A really difficult champ to balance because if she's really really strong she can be one of those super oppressive junglers what tends to happen with evelyn is if she's in the meta you hate it because everything that you do for every other jungler uh is wrong 
So the way you I ward specifically like over walls to see jungle pathing, all of that stuff is completely different when I play against Evelyn. I have to ward camps specifically, uh, similar to how I play against Rengar a lot of times. I have to ward deeper in the jungle to be able to spot out Evelyn. And so uh, because of that, like all the stuff that you learn through like playing a shitload of games isn't applicable on these very unique types of champions. So if Evelyn ever becomes back into the meta, she tends to be one of those champions where people just hate playing and she tends to snowball ungodly hard uh so i'm always really hesitant to say shit she should get buffed in a lot of different ways but uh and this is like quite a significant buff you see 30 seconds on rank 1 20 seconds on rank, rank 2 this is the kind of stuff that i kind of wish draven got you know um and although it doesn't seem like that much uh it, it's quite a big buff i'm sure uh eve players like moon will be really really happy to see champion like his signature champion getting buffed uh, again, and I don't know. I'm pretty sure this won't bring Eve back because she still doesn't have great matchups against stuff like Rek'Sai or Gragas or N Nidalee or any of the top tier junglers, but this is just kind of bringing her up to a level. Um, passive attack speed increase. So I would heard about these buffs before. I think this is pretty cool. Ezreal has always tended to not be too strong kind of late game. And this gives him an extra 20% attack speed, which is always super nice. It won't do anything for you early game. However, like mid and late game, it will just give you a little bit more power. I think that that's okay. I think Ezreal has a really, really nice niche in the meta with his two item spike off uh, Iceborne and Mana Mune. I think that's it. Yeah, it's Mana Mune. And so I... I I don't necessarily know if he needs these types of buffs, but maybe this might more incentivize non-gauntlet builds. I think that's something that maybe the Riot might want to do because the gauntlet build is Ezreal's like bread and butter at the moment because the utility you can get from that build just makes him god mode. However, uh, the Triforce build is is like a, just a really, really snowball build. How uh, it'd be nice to be in a situation with on Ezreal if you can choose what build for what situation to go rather than always defaulting Gauntlet because uh, it gives you like the best type of utility and damage mix. So this is like maybe a small way to go toward that area. But this is nice. I think it's really good. Uh, game playing. So this champ is a real big problem right now. This champ came out with the last Juggernaut patch, Last Worlds. It's gotten nerfed eight bajillion times. The entire time since then... I, he's still been good. And although he dropped out of the meta for a little bit, I think that's mainly because uh, his top lane matchups weren't super good. But, like, lo and behold, like, Shen got meta again, Nar got meta again, and my god, game plan came back. The biggest problem I've always had with game plan has always been the ulti. I think the ulti does too much damage at too low of a cooldown. And so, all I really wanted in all of these gameplay nerfs was just to nerf his ulti. That was like the only thing that I had problems with because it's one of the last globals that remain in the game that's AoE and does insane damage, especially if you know Thunderlords. And so it looks like that's what exactly what they're doing. They're nerfing his base damage to 40. That's that's really uh, high. Nerfing his scurvy, so he has mana problems early game. That's, that's pretty big. And... You know, like a life steal off keg, that's actually pretty big too. And the ulti gets nerfed as well as the damage. I think that that's, that's so many nerfs. I don't know if he needed this much. I was comfortable with just like a cooldown nerf on its ulti. However, they tended to nerf not only his laning phase, because what a lot of gameplays do is they just spam W on cooldown and start mana crystal uh, and his base health. But they also nerfed a lot of his ulti like not only his damage got one his ulti got 180 damage nerf at level one that's almost he almost lost 33 percent of his his uh damage at level a uh, rank one that's a shit if annie lost 33 percent damage on her tibbers she wouldn't be able to get kills solo so um i don't mind gameplay not being in the meta because he's he feels like his globals are like similar to Karthus, like from like a very old age. Like when you have full map globals like Shen, Gameplay, or Karthus, they tend to be very hard to balance around. I don't necessarily think that he needed this many nerfs. However, I, I do think he needed at least the ulti nerfs, uh, the ulti cooldown nerfs. I'm okay with it, but I don't play game plank, so I'm obviously biased because I don't really like playing against game plank at some times. Uh, he might still see play, but these are uh, certainly a lot of nerfs. Like, uh, if they're going to do this as well, like, maybe Nar just stands at, like, the very, very summit of top lane right now with no counter picks. 
Except for Yasuo, which just gets Shango kicked. <laughs> okay, so Gragas. I heard really bad things about Gragas before. So before I look at the patch notes, um, I was told that Gragas is... Right now, Gra Gragas is really strong because not only does he have strong disengage potential, but he has really, really good initiation potential. Actually, that's why a large majority of how you take... Or why you bring him is because his initiation is just so godlike. So, you E into Flash... They're stunned for one second, and as long as you don't mess up the combo, because I see a lot of people try to auto attack or try to Q and then ulti. If you just ulti immediately after you stun them, it's 100% unflashable as long as they get hit with the stun. However, Riot decided that that type of initiation was too, too good. So... And I, I kind of agree. Honestly, I think that it's really hard to balance a champion around that type of initiation. So, they're, okay, what are they doing? They're adding a 0.55 second time where you can flash. Essentially, it means that the combo now has spacing in the middle to where if you do have flash, you're not going to die to this combo. Um, I, I think Gragas is going to change it to, instead of doing the immediately immediate ulti, you're just going to open with Q. And the Q guarantees a 1.3 second slow anyways, and the damage. And then you just wait for them to flash. But giving the other person uh, the ability to flash as well as do other defensive summoners is still like a really big nerf to Gragas, especially his initiation. As Oh, and they're also nerfing his body slam. Wow. Uh, I don't know if they needed to do that. I do think, though... A lot of the reason why I like cooldown nerfs on champions, for instance, like I talked about Ash Arrow cooldown nerf, I talked about Game Plank cooldown nerf, uh, and to some, this is also a cooldown nerf, right, for Gragas, is that Riot's recent decisions, this split to, across the board, give every single role CDR, has been kind of really strange for me to see as like a... As a person who's played the game for a long time. Because I think CDR should be a valuable stat that you you itemize for certain champions who are really good at it. And you have to give up stuff for CDR because uh, it's such a unique stat. It makes some champions really, really OP. So let's say Rise with CDR, super good. Anyone with flat scaling CDR plus percentage scaling CDR tends to be extremely powerful once you hit near the cap. Uh, however, this season they decided, you know what, we're just going to give everyone 40% CDR. And because of that, they I feel like they run into a lot of situations where, it's, sure, it may be fun to use your abilities more. And I think that generally across the board, it is enjoyable that I have my cooldowns up faster at, at all points of the game. My ultis are up every team fight as opposed to like every team fight and a half. However, it comes to weird balance decisions where I don't think you need to nerf the E. However... Because there's 40% CDR so easily obtainable by every champion, you need you might need to nerf it just because of the recent itemization changes this season. So, because they made it so you can get you get CDR purchasing literally your core itemization a lot of times, especially on like let's say AP mid champions, it's like Abyssal and Zanyas, and so. A whole, I, I don't think he needs the, the E nerf, but maybe they think he needs it because CDR is such a, a prevalent stat in the game that you come across times like this and like maybe some of the earlier champions where you literally have to balance champions around them getting 30 to 40% CDR in the mid game on two items every single game. I think that, that that's like a really big design pro or like a balance problem in the f and it's probably something that they're that is gonna maybe be reverted like i i don't imagine it's gonna stay this way going to next season because i think that oh well, maybe it does but it just seems really really strange to me as a design uh, a balanced philosophy to keep that much cdr in the game anyways let's move on okay jace right now a lot of people ask me what do i what do you think about jace i don't know i don't play the champion i never did even when he was meta i played very small amounts of jace um I only see one or two Jace players. Just Jace is the high elo Jace main. That's the only guy I see. Uh, I think he's okay. He tends to fill Varus' spot as an AD mid lane poke lane champion. However, Varus just tends to do it better. Not only is he safer um, just in general, but he also has CC. While Jace's main, uh, his gate is more of a disengage rather than an initiation. Or, or, uh, and, or it's like a, a mobility disengage and slash initiation. However, Varus' ulti gives you a lot more room to work with in my opinion 
And so because of that, he tends to fight the same spot, but is just an inferior champion a lot of times. However, I feel like Jace has much better pushing power, and he's really, really good at like 1v1s, much more so than Varus. And so Skirmishing, I think he's a better champion as well. And so what did they decide to do? They decided to buff the E-Mana cost. I think that's really good. I think right now there's two different Jace builds. There's a tier build, and then there's a tier list build, where you just rush your moves. So the tier build means it's that your mid game spike is really good, but your early game isn't that that strong. And uh, the tier list build means you just slam people, but you might go oom, like in literally two trades. And so any kind of mana buff for Jace is really nice because I think maybe pushing him away from the tier itemization allows him to be a more enjoyable champion. Um, at least that's what I think. What else did they do? They gave him bonus. He had an AP ratio on his ulti. Okay, well, they made it a bonus AD ratio. Okay, so they, these are relatively good buffs for him. Um, I think right now people are maxing W second, so this this mana buff isn't as good as it used to be in the past where everyone max E second. However, it's still nice. I, I think because people are maxing W second, though, uh, it, it's not that big of a buff. It's just a very, very small buff, and I think that that's fine, you know? You know, remember my balance philosophy where I want to bring lower underplayed champions that aren't as strong up to, like, a standard? They don't have to be super OP, but just, just so that they're, like, good in some situations. I think this is one of those movements upwards, so to speak. Um, Jin. So I talked about Jin being the one of the three champions that I wanted to nerf. So... Whew. Okay, let's go. So the W A D ratio down. R no longer refunds cooldown for unused shots. R's execute damage up. Base damage down. Okay. So they inc they decrease the bonus damage of, of W poke. I think that's reasonable. I think a, a lot of the, the problems with Jin is I, I don't mind that because Jin's biggest thing is that he CCs them. If he lands the shot and it CCs you, you should be dead. It, most of the times and so losing bonus ad damage isn't super good it's more impactful for champions like jindo who can consistently hit 400 500 ad a game due to his passive um but and it's definitely a nerf however it's okay if that um the biggest thing is their decision to nerf ulti is kind of i think smart so generally what it is is they nerf the base damage on it and they buff the execute damage. So a lot of times with Jin, you literally run mid with <laughs> Yomu's Ghost Blade, and you W into four ulti hits can kill mid laner because mid lane runs scaling AP, and you do about a thousand damage plus with your rotation at level six to nine. It's actually really really silly. I feel like to be able to curtain call from one hundred percent and kill the other player, and so I really like the fact that it's more execute based. I think that that's really really cool. I think that's definitely a good way to nerf the champion without making him unusable. Like, you just try to bring the top 380s down a little bit so everyone else can see more play. I think that's uh, pretty good. I mean, yeah, when you think about when, when someone does point out, 29% damage buff on W is actually really big. And so maybe I'm underselling the W nerf. However, I think that it's okay. Like, you'll still see a, a good amount of play. Jinx, um, this champ doesn't see much play. And it's because... <laughs> actually, don't know why. I don't play much Jinx. I don't really talk to people about Jinx, honestly. So I don't know why she doesn't see much play. I'm assuming that her matchups are bad and she needs a lot of protection. She always tends to have to need protection. And uh, that's something that... And she spikes on three, two plus items. And usually a lot of the other ADs spike on one. Or bring a lot of utility. And so what did they decide to do? They buffed her execute damage. Oh, I think that's okay. Um, I don't think it's going to do anything for her. But it's just a nice small buff. Kennen. Smoother basic autos. Okay. Power travel times at normal speed. Oh, okay. So his W moves slower, but his normal auto moves faster. Generally, I actually like this. I've been playing a lot of Kennen recently. Having the W move... I, I didn't... I, I kind of maybe felt something was wrong, but I couldn't pinpoint it because I didn't play enough. But having his basic autos move faster just feels better. It's a very small buff, like probably 8%, 7% attack speed buff, but it's 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 nice. I think Kennen's in a great spot already. I don't really think he needs any kind of clear buffs because he's one of the counterpicks people are using to Nar, 
and he has a huge, insane teamfight presence, and the recent itemization nerfs make Kennen very, very good. Pro the Belt, Zanya's Abyssal, uh, CDR Boots all make Kennen super strong. And so I don't think he needs buffs. Uh, I just, this is just, well, it's kind of whatever. Kled. He's colored by milk cannot change the color of Kled's Scar's health bar. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I don't think this champion is super good right now. I think that he's like a split pushing champion that can't really out split push any of the top tier. And so, but he's a, he has a, he's like an initiation champion, but the way he survives in T-fights may be a little bit annoying. I would like to maybe see a, like he can only dismount and remount once in a team fight. Doing it multiple times, there should probably be like a, a, a lock on it, but... Maybe that's just me. Honestly, I think this champ doesn't even need to be touched right now because I don't think he's very good. He's just above average, and he's fun to play, and that's okay. Uh, Malphite. I don't really think Malphite's a big problem right now. So uh, maybe they want Malphite more as a counter pick to a lot of these top lane stuff. Like maybe they're trying to bring a little bit of the tanks back in the meta. Uh, so they're buffing W and they're giving him 5% more bonus armor, and his skill is better with bonus armor. Uh, I don't really think that's going to do too much. Uh, Malphite's always been a really good or really counter pick, kind of okay Jax counter pick, but those two champions aren't seeing much play, so you really have to be able to match up with like Nar at the moment, and I don't really think Malphite's going to be able to do that. So unless the other bruisers see more play, I don't see this really affecting him. It's nice though, it's okay. Um, certainly, I'm not going to say that Malphite's a weak champion, I just think he's not primed for the champions being played at the moment. Morgana, E cast range increased. Uh, okay, that's just a minor buff. I think that as support, uh, she's not very strong right now. As a mid laner, she's just counter pick worthy. It's like LeBlanc, Lissandra, I think she's okay into. Um, and so, like, buffing stuff that would help her is actually pretty good because I think that she's maybe too situational right now to be played as support and even mid lane. Uh, moving down, Oriana. Everyone asks me about this champion all the time. Um, I think. Uh, there's one person who always comes into my channel and says, asks me about this champion. I think Oriana, with Grail nerfed, wasn't able, isn't able to find good itemization paths to get to the top. And so I've seen a lot of Ori's rush Grail to do the same thing as before, but it's not as good. I've seen a lot of Tier Morellos, which is still good, but uh, more of a uh, investment on other stuff. I think that she's a great champion to see competitively, and I don't mind playing against her in games. I feel like only really good Ori's could actually play her at a very high level. She's one of the more harder champions to play because typically you have to watch positioning for just your character but with oriana you watch positioning for your, both your character and your your ball which is very difficult she's one of the champions i actually recommend people play for mid lane because she te teaches you a lot about uh the importance of positioning and i okay so what do they do they're buffing lowering ulti cooldown which i think is pretty nice really nice she's a champion that tends to get 40 percent anyways and they're flattening mana across the board i don't think she'll see play off this but i think that again she's weak right now and she's bringing he's getting brought up a little bit poppy so movement speed buff up and 15 percent buff on w Ooh. Man, when Poppy was super meta, she was one of the most obnoxious champions to play against ever. Uh, they're buffing a lot of tanks right now. Maybe they, they want there to be more uh, flexible options. So, uh, <laughs> I remember when Poppy, Malphite, uh, Maokai, and all the top lane tanks were in the meta. I thought that was a really boring time. I'm all for being able to play tanks situationally. I think that they're neat. finding the mid the balance is what Rai's trying to do right now. I do think Poppy's a little bit weaker, but I hesitate to put too many buffs into her because if the top lane meta switches to tanks again, I actually just hate it. It's so I I don't I don't like playing against it. And I think that is really really boring to play as as the top laner. So like we're trying to find the middle ground. I think buffing tanks up is Riot's first step. I just hope they don't overdo it. Uh, this is good for her. That's it. Rexai, whoo. This champion, six or seven nerfs in a row, has never gotten buffed ever, and he's still the best jungler in the game. <laughs> I love it. So what are they going to do? I do think the ulti cooldown is the number one thing to hit because you try to to make it so that she can't clear as fast. It can't be have the kind of global presence. So they nerfed his ulti by 30 seconds. I think that's fair. Really, really good. Eventually, they nerfed his tunnel time. I think that that's good as well. Um... Honestly, Rek'Sai is still going to be God. So these nerfs help bring him down to level. I think he's a, an oppressive jungler with Gragas, and I 
both of them being nerfed means that the overall pool should be able to be opened up for a lot more, not more, sorry, a lot more champions. Uh, so I'm very happy to see this, especially the ulti cooldown, uh, meaning that he can't really pressure both sides of the map at the same time. Uh, ulti, Riven, whoo! Riot really wants, wants people to be mad. I don't think Riven's super good right now. I think typically Riven mains are players who played Riven 600 games in a row. So they just, they, when you lose to Riven, it feels bad because you're typically playing against players who play Riven as, that's like their job to play Riven. I think that this might got, get a lot of controversy because people think that Riven's a skillless champion. I don't know why. I think people just like to hate on champions that like toxic people play or people like, like Vayne and Riven, like, uh, generally, Riven's one of the hardest champions in the game to play. I don't think she's in a great spot. I think these buffs do help, um, maybe, and they help quite a bit, because when you look at the maximum damage, it goes all the way up to, like, plus 120. I think that's really cool. Um, maybe, you know, if these buffs were in the game, Immortals would have won the series. So, uh, I do think that, I don't think Riven's going to see much play in competitive, however, this is nice. I don't think that these buffs are that bad. <laughs> Although, a lot of people tell me they're really scared of these buffs. Eh. Rise, rank... Oh, thank God. Okay, his ulti range at level 1, people were skipping to uh, because it was so short. It's still pretty short. They buffed it by 25... 250. Uh, any buff is a good buff. I think they're being slow with Ryze. I think Ryze, again, not as good as his old, his last iteration, but still like a strong champion. I think he's in a good spot right now. They don't want to touch him too much. I think it's okay. And this is just so that when people get to 6 on Ryze, they don't skip the ability because I've seen some Ryzes do that. Sivir. So this is a champion where I think that, yeah, she does too much damage late game and she's too good utility-wise. Nerfing her will... With Ash and Jin will allow other ADs to come up to, to, to the top. I don't think you should nerf them that much, though. So, uh, off the top of my head, I wanted maybe either ricochet damage to decrease or her attack speed uh, to decrease. Either or. And so, what did I get? I got I got both. So, the bounce AD bounce damage decrease. I was thinking about lowering crit damage, but like by like maybe 20% or 25% onto the bounce targets. But uh, I, that's, that's still like... a. That's a point one bonus AD nerf. That's 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 not that much, but I mean I'll take it. You know we're just we're just looking to bring these champions down. And what's the other ner nerf? Okay, so they nerfed her attack speed by ten to twenty percent. That's a decent amount. Like I'll take that. And so like I said, she got knocked out a little bit. She's still gonna be good late game. Still one of the best champions in the game. However, hopefully not banned picked every single game. Thresh. I think Thresh is not in a very good spot right now. I, uh, a lot of Thresh mains love Thresh, but it's hard to play him in, uh, in a lot of situations. And I always think of Thresh as one of the coolest champions to play, even if her, his kit is stupidly overloaded with power in terms of like super slow, super CC, uh, a lot of life and like life saving ability with W. Uh, I think that giving them, what what is this, 10 to 30 seconds off ulti, that's super nice. It's not going to change Thresh's relative power. It just means that late game, he's a little bit better. And I, you're bringing a weaker champion up to the top. It's good. It's really good. 30 seconds off is really nice. Trundle E, I think a lot of people are really scared because Trundle support fell out of the meta and it came back uh, really, really strong. And so, yeah, Trundle, they're nerfing it so that you can't just keep pillars up all the time. Especially as a support. I think that that's fine. Um, he is a little bit strong. I don't think he's maybe as strong as people think. But he did see a lot of play. Especially in, in, in the LCS playoffs so far. And uh, I think that this is... Okay. Not a big deal. Three seconds off does hurt a lot. Especially for support trundle. But you'll probably still see him be played. Vayne. Uh, Q scaling increased at later ranks. Okay. So it goes from 0.5 total damage to 0.7. Whew, that's actually pretty nice. You might see situations where instead of maxing... Uh, a, lot of, a lot of veins before used to buy BF and max Q. And then everyone just switched to like... And then even in some, some situations where I played a lot of vein, I did 3 points Q and then max W. Um, but I can see situations where now uh, the value of AD relatively increases. And so maybe I rush is okay you know it's not maybe there's a chance to change item builds rather than going for the very standard zeal or bork rush 
or and Zeal Bork into other things. And so I think that it's cool. It's not going to make Vayne super OP. This champ still sucks. Don't worry. But uh, bring weaker champions up. Vagar, this champ sucks in lane. Like straight up, this champ, uh, it's he is very strong if you hit level 13. Like 9 to 13 when he gets max level on box, he's a great champion. Super good champion. Laney phase though, eh, kind of kind of lame. Kind of boring. So what do they do? Um Whoa! <laughs> okay, they gave him two more AP on kills their assists. And they fixed a bug where you wouldn't see the warning ring. Okay. Uh they're making it so he can take off if he snowballs. It's okay. I think Vagar is in an okay spot right now. Uh, he won't see almost any competitive play, but he is strong if you can get matchups where he can't get punished early. And I, even more so now if you're in very bloody games, which rank tends to be very bloody a lot of times, he Vagar was just going to 1v5 and just go off. Uh, 2 AP per kill doesn't sound like a lot, but in situa games where I commonly get 10 kills and assists, that's an extra... 20 AP. I think that's a pr really good amount. And you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised how much like small stuff helps. Uh, yeah, I don't think it changes too much though. But yeah. Okay. Vi. Oh, Medios was talking about this on Twitter. Okay, so Vi is kind of like a tier 2, tier 3 jungler. I remember when she was in meta, she got counterpicked by Morg support all the time. And then she tends to just be weaker than than the top tier junglers right now. I would say, safely say she's around tier 2 or tier 3 underneath stuff like Nidalee, Gragas, Rek'Sai, Elise. Um, so, what's the change? Uh, her cooldown gets lowered a little bit. Okay, I think that's nice. Uh, the Q cooldown... Oh, okay, okay. This is really nice. So, so, the one thing you have to know about Elise, or Vi, when you play against Vi, if you flash the Q, she has no damage. She's forced to max Q because the, the CDR decreases by so much, and it's her ganking tool. But if you don't hit it, you, you, it sucks. Like, if you're farming and the other juggler invades you and your Q is down, it sucks. So any kind of CDR buff to it is really nice. And I, I really like the fact that they're lowering the CDR early. This may not matter too much, but it's just, like, small steps. Um... Uh, commonly, when you see Vi players, I think Super Metroid is the most common Vi player at the moment. He'll flash and Q, or he'll Q into flash at the very end, just so he can secure the Q damage, because he understands as well that Q is almost all of his damage. Really, really important that he hit it. Um, I do agree with the Q cooldown buffs a lot, and that's the number one thing I would have buffed about her if I wanted to bring her relative strength up. Uh, upon first level up, Vi immediately gains two charges of excessive force. Oh, okay. That's cool. Um... It's not a huge deal, but if you, let's say, wanted to, at level 1, you weren't sure whether to, if you're going to get a leash, having, and you weren't sure, like, if you're going to get one or not, you have to do a level 1 fight, um, having the ability to choose E late later in the game means that you're giving 2 E, so it allows you to just get your shield. If you're getting a leash, starting E, I think, is better. And so, it, <laughs> it but if you're not, starting W is better. And so... I think that it's it's okay. Like it's nice. It's not it doesn't change anything though. What changes next? Oh god. Okay. Turgus tur target champions more consistently. Holy shit. Okay. There's a lot of videos out there about turret AI. Turret AI is completely random. It's Sometimes it'll attack the closest one. Sometimes it'll attack the, the guy in the farthest. Sometimes it'll, it'll attack the guy wearing, like, the blue shirt. Or, like, sometimes it'll attack the red champion. So, turret AI just is crazy in this game. Sometimes it just goes where you don't expect it. Even for pro players, people who've been playing the game a long time, uh, turrets just attack random shit all the time. This is a really, really big change, especially for competitive games. And even for, for non-competitive games, because it makes it very consistent how the turret's going to act when you dive. So, when you dive a champion, especially in situations where you two or three man dive one single champion, you know exactly what happens when the aggro, when the aggro falls off, you know what the tower is going to hit. And that's so important because there's a lot, been a lot of situations where aggro falls off and it hits the wrong target and the top player will get a triple kill or like top player will get a double kill and you just be like, oh my god. Because it might not necessarily have been your fault in that in the turret juggle, it just means that the turret AI was just went really random. Um, so I actually think this is a really, really big change and super nice for all players. I'm very happy this is in the game. This is the biggest change of the patch. 
Like, I already know. This is great. And I'm very happy they added this. Um, bug fixes. Usually, most of these bug fixes don't do, do too much. Last time, when I talked about bug fixes, they talked about uh, Graves Q applying Cleaver in one auto or two autos. And that, that was like a big one. But for, for the most part, 90% of these aren't a big, a big deal. And they already said they're gonna change. They're gonna change you the soul buffs later. Um, yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts on the patch. I am overall, it's a great patch. They nerfed Gragas Rexai. They nerfed um, top three ads as well. And unfortunately, I didn't. And they nerfed game plank. Unfortunately, I didn't see a Nar nerf, so I was kind of hoping for that. But um. Or a Vlad nerf. So no, no, neither of those cha two champions got nerfed, but a lot of lower level champions got buffed. And I think that that's really, really important. And the tower AI. So I love this patch notes, actually. I give it like a 8 out of 10. Did great. Um, okay, I'm going to go look at Yorick real quick. And Shepard Wright, thanks for resubbing. Welcome back for 13 months. Sorry I didn't catch you while I was doing this. It was It has been a while. Let me quickly pull up the Yorick rework and get back in queue because I know all of you guys want to watch me drop the diamond one. And I can't but help, but do it for you guys. So let me get back in queue real quick. All right, we're good. Oh, okay. Actually, I'll, I'll keep this off for now. So, um, York, they, I think this champion, it's like Vlad, so it just did too much in terms of sustain and a huge lane bully. So they just reworked it because they they let when Riot reworks the champion, they leave it in the gutter until it gets reworked. Saying so, hopefully it hopefully it I just want champions to be really cool, really enjoyable to play and not too annoying to play against. And so I think they did a decent job with the Vlad rework, even though he's still stupidly strong at. I'm hoping he's just more interactive. That's a lot of what I hope for for reworks. So, like for instance, I don't want to play a champ with four passives. I don't want Skeleton King to come into this game. Before he got reworked in League, I remember like Skeleton King was a champ with a stun and literally three abilities that were passives, which is just <laughs> it's like it's like what what where's the fun playing that champion? Like, I don't understand it. It's like the current Warwick. I know that champ's gonna get reworked because he has two buttons. I guess you can count three if you count as W. I don't really count as W. It's, it's literally a champion which has a very low interactive uh, kit. So what is this? What is this ability? Call, call up to four missed callers at service at once. They does he summon them? A grave is occasionally created when an enemy minion or neutral monsters die in New York. All champions that die near him leave a grave. Uh, okay, okay. Next attack deals bonus damage or stores of health. Is it, he's still a melee champ? Okay. If last rise kills a target, it creates a grave. If there's at least three graves nearby, and last rise is on cooldown. New York can cast awakening to raise mist callers from the graves. <laughs> what? Okay, so Q has to go on cooldown first, and then you can, and then, okay, okay. Okay, I don't know how long Graves last. If they last forever, like a Laoi Tentacles, that'd be nuts. They probably have a cast time. And it, and it raises four. That's cool, that's cool, I like it. Like I said, interactive. You work around kind of a mini game, but it's okay. As long as it's not Skarner, the Skarner Towers, I'm okay with mini games. Oh! I like it! It's, it's like a root. It keeps it's Jarvan ulti, right? I, I I like I like I like Jarvan ulti being in the game. I actually think it's cool. It's destructible, so that's nice. Maybe it dies instantly, but I think that it's cool. I don't know if it does damage either, but I like it. Hurls a globule of mist that deals magic damage, applies a slow, and marks the target. <laughs> what the oh wait, wait so it's a skill shot okay so it, it, it rewards you for not only for awakening stuff and they'll jump on them okay okay but only if they're marked so if you can dodge the morning mist then you're okay 
Okay, so that they can give them extra power because it's like that rather than being like the old E where you just target them and automatically get harassed. When Yorick attacks the maiden's target, he'll do bonus magic damage based on the enemy's maximum health. What the f- What is this? This is crazy. Does she move as well? Like if the target runs away, is she, is she immobile? No, she moves as well. That's cool. I like it. I, I feel like- I feel bad because the target of all these abilities is actually- Mordekaiser, and I thought they ruined his rework. Like, they, they didn't go out too well. They tried to do some revolutionary stuff where they had a melee 80 carry that split XP. But I, I think that it's cool. It, it summons a, a thing that lasts forever and can split push. That's awesome. I think that's nice. And certainly, I don't think that's been in the game before. Overall, the champion just looks really cool. Oh, funny. Oh, of course the Rek'Sai side comes top and kills him. Wait. That Rek'Sai side played that like garbage. What? Are you serious? <laughs> All right, sorry. I'm I'm looking at the wrong stuff. The the kid looks cool. I like it. Um, late game and team fights. He okay? He he has a Tiamat. Dang, it's a split push champion. Dude, her Shin Shin is gonna go crazy with this champ. I can already look at how many hits the the guy the the ulti can tank. It's like six six shots, five four to six shots. That's Dude, Hashin's just gonna have a field day with this champ, man. All, this is like this is like the top lane dream. Cause all you do is you just shove. It's actually <laughs> It's actually great. He looks good in the 1v1 situation too. He looks like a lot of fun. I like it. Ryan did a good job. <laughs> 